through your fault. You can have light when you are the source of all light uh, without a sun to explain that light. In fact, God is establishing the law of first mention in the scripture. For the first time a concept is introduced in the word of God, the principles, the concepts that will surround that law will follow that introduction throughout the pages of the word of God throughout the rest of time. God will always give you a word before you see a manifestation of that word. Let there be light. Four days later, there is a manifestation to explain that light. There is an object to contain the creative authority of God's word. You know what I'm talking about because God called you healed in a service and yet the manifestation of that healing did not show up for a few days. We have to learn how to celebrate the reality of the inception said the tumor's gone. Three weeks later the tumor disappeared. Can you believe uh, between the origin of his word uh, before the manifestation of the proof? Can you find the hope uh, to say I stand on the word of God uh, regardless of what the doctor says. Regardless of the reality of my condition. I have a word and I stand on that word. Next. God brings forth varieties of life forms. The seas swarm with life. The sky is taken over by birds and winged creatures. And God says it again, this is good. Creatures great and small graze in the glens and roam the pristine forest of, of this perfect world. Then God paused and made man. He created him in his own image after his own likeness to be inhabited by his own spirit. He was a creature apart to think, to feel, to appreciate beauty, to control his environment, to rule the world, to worship his God. And it was good. In fact, God said, this is very good. Adam was the monarch of all he surveyed. Everything was under his feet, loved by God. Daily in fellowship with him. And yet, one particular day, God declared, this is not good. For Adam ruled his vast empire alone. The birds of the air had companions to share their nest. The foxes had mates in their dens. The neutrons had protons. But Adam roamed the world alone, solitary. Adam possessed relationship with God, but he had no prospect of fellowship with another human being. And God said, relationship with me alone is not enough. Let me make it clear. Some things are better shared. The presence of God is not meant to be found alone. That's why the body of Christ is so valuable in your life. Because there's something about when believers come together. That's why we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Because there's a divine release of God's fulfillment that happens no other way. God said of his own creation, what I provided you, Adam, is not enough. God recognized Adam needed more. Adam's poverty. He was rich in fellowship with God, but he was poor in the prospect of relationship. So God placed him asleep, and to work, God went again into a deep sleep, and out of his own self, God created. The answer to the question Adam didn't even know he was asking. And when he woke up, he was starstruck. He's not even very creative. I mean, after all, he names the animals, and he names her, and he he stutters a little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Woman, whoa, wow. I mean, after all, wow is there, right? You'll find out. The gentry, yes, I'm going to. The solution to the problem he doesn't even know he possesses because that's God. He gives us what we don't even ask for. What we don't even know we need. God's setting us up for a better level. Stood in all her perfection before.
before sin marred God's creation. Wow. God had made her, Eve, especially for Adam. And now everything's really good. Yeah. Like exceedingly good. Yeah. Super califragilistic. <laughs> but sin comes. And it shatters the goodness. And Adam loses his relationship with God. Yet he maintains his fellowship with woman. Now, like us, we have fellowship with people, but no relationship with God. And just as you need people in your relationship with God, a relationship with a person will never take the place Amen. of your relationship with God. It doesn't matter how perfect you may believe them to be, until you have a relationship with God and a relationship with people, you are not fulfilled. No wonder the enemy tries to divide your family. No wonder the enemy tries to wreck your relationship. No wonder he reminds you of the anger, the abuse, the bitterness, the pain. No wonder he slides in to manipulate our emotions and drive us apart from people. Yeah. Right. And it began well, yeah. but it didn't end well. Because life has a way of not turning out the way we planned. You know, every Adam was affected by the fall of man. When Adam eats of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the law of entropy is introduced into the equation of creation. Metal now rusts. Food rots. Muscles atrophy. Cells mutate. Stars collapse. People die. All because of Adam's choice. But let me make it clear to every believer. There is no Adam in your body or in the universe that is not subject to the overriding authority of God's divine power. Whatever condition you've arrived in today, God can override the laws of nature to bring you out of whatever it is you find yourself trapped in. The beginning of God's plan, Adam and Eve, they're more than a love story gone wrong. A saga of positive events that turn negative. You see, it's within the first family that we understand that things can begin so beautifully, but go so wrong. And yet it's within their failure that we see a concept of God that we would not see any other way. When they could not go up to Him, He came down to them. Adam! Where are you, Adam? solution for. The God who never looked out of himself to create all that existed. That God poses a question. Adam! Where are you, Adam? Is God asking because he does not know where Adam is? Is God calling his name because God does not understand the condition of Adam's soul? Absolutely not. For that would impinge upon his intelligence, his deity, and his greatness. But God is calling his name. A sure sound. This is where you're at your best, Adam. A beacon. Adam, find your way home. Adam, I'm still here. Adam, hear my voice. Hear me right now, Tom, Mary, Teresa, Billy, and Randy. Come home. God is not asking a question he does not possess the answer for. He's given Adam huh, an understanding. Huh? I am right where you left me. I haven't changed. I haven't moved. Hear my call. Hear my name. Come home. Huh? Every one of you in this house, the reason you feel God's spirit is we worship, God's saying, I'm right where you left me. Down through the generations of time, across the span of eons and generations, huh? through the hours and the minutes and the days, down God came, down through 42 generations, across the bonds of the law, past the tabernacle and the temples, the ceremonies, the feasts, Passover and Pentecost, through the high priest and the Levitical priesthood, past the judges and the kings, down God came. Huh? I'm coming down to get you, Adam. Huh? Yourself out of. I'll say it again. 
the humanity of God, you can touch his divinity. Let me tell you something, God is all inclusive. He's a one man God. He's a one man show. God is the offerer and he's the offering. When God got ready to redeem me, he needed nothing outside of himself to redeem me with. What God needed, God became. What God asked for, God supplied. In the Old Testament, the priest had to bring the offering. He had to offer the offering because he could not receive the offering. But God offered himself as a sacrifice for everyone out of our sins. He was the sacrifice. That's what Genesis 22 said. That God himself shall provide the sacrifice. God offers himself to himself on my behalf. That's the God we're worshiping today. But why is it when we sin, we run from God? Adam's quick to point at Eve. Say, turn! By the way, she was your idea. <laughs> Adam, by blaming Eve, is suddenly blaming God. But I'll just be honest with this congregation. I refuse to leave my destiny in the hands of anyone else's decisions. Amen. Can I say it again? I will not leave my spiritual destiny in the hands of anyone else's decisions. You see, I decided a long time ago, nobody can help pray me. No one can help sacrifice me. No, I may not have the gifts or the talents of some, but I can connect with God just as good or better than anyone else. Oh, I don't let anyone determine where I'm headed. Eat. She blames the serpent. Explain some of the dilemmas we live, isn't it? Even the first family is quick to push the finger of blame towards someone else. So God judges the servant. God judges Eve. God judges Adam. And all we endure is a result of the dysfunction within the first family. Chaos, guilt, shame. But in the middle of judgment, God gives a promise. Has anyone in this house ever had God give you a word in the middle of chaos? Anyone in this house ever had a prophecy in the middle of a storm? A flicker of hope in the middle of pain? Something that stirred your spirit and you knew this isn't all there is. In the middle of being cast from paradise and judgment falling, God says, Woman, something you will produce will bruise the head of the serpent. A word of God that would bring order to the disorder of her life. Something will come through you that will make it better. It's the first messianic prophecy. And it's simply this. It's not over. It's not over. The devil thought he had the last laugh. But it's not over. Can you imagine the excitement at the first pregnancy? I mean, how do they even know what a pregnancy is? There's no what to expect when you're expecting. There's no grandmother to tell you what to do. Well, there are some blessings being the first family, but no one to tell you what to expect. But can you imagine what happens when Eve? She wakes up one morning and says, Adam, I feel so well. He grumbles silently to himself as he heads out to fight mosquitoes. <laughs> Weeds and planes. Till the hard ground. The next morning, she's still sick. And he's a wise man, he keeps it to himself. But after two weeks of incessant nausea, it slips out his mouth. Well, if you had to talk to the snake, <laughs> two weeks become eight, and he's so tired of her and her pain, but he can't deny something on the inside is changing. Yeah. And then she asked that question that no man should ever be asked. Do I look fat? <laughs> I mean, what do you do? If you tell the truth, you're in trouble. If you lie, you're in trouble. With what do you do? There is no win there for the men. But I wonder what it was like when the baby moved for the first time. What was it like when the shift happened inside her womb? 
What was it like when she felt the current of life inside of her body and she knew this is the promise. Something's in me and I'm going to win. We haven't lost everything. It's not over. Ah, you ruined my house. You messed up my family. You got me cast out under a curse. But I'm going to win in the end saying it's not over. Theological debate that Cain and Abel are twins and it's irrelevant, but one is a keeper of the sheep and one is a tiller of the ground. And Adam and Eve raised them to be religious, but it didn't turn out the way they think. You ever had something not turn?